holy crap welcome back to the worm it's uh it's a little early for my taste to be outside thinking about working but i think i'm gonna need to fly the drone this morning now the wind's already starting to pick up but uh gotta look at some trees some pine trees i still gotta throw the second uh top plate on this thing and then gotta figure out i think i'm gonna do like i've done before put a ridge i don't know what you call it a ridge beam up there it makes sense to support the roof through the wall, like through the center of the wall. Maybe it's not necessary, I don't know. That's how I've done it before and so far it's worked out. I haven't had too many buildings fall over. I was kind of hoping I could use two by fours for the rafters here. The roof's gonna go like that and rafters along there, even if I had to put them really close together because I have enough lumber to make a lot of two by fours, two by sixes. I mean, they just, I just end up making so much waste you know, because it's five and a half inches wide. If you only have five inches of board left on one of these big slabs, then, you know, you, you can't make another board. And what I've got left are like this. These are probably not quite wide enough to make two two by sixes, like those two top boards. All in all, that's not enough to uh, do all the rafters. I think I need like roughly 13 on a side. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to need more than 20 rafters and... What I've got here is not gonna do it. And you guys know, I'm not a builder. I build this stuff just however it seems right to me. Kind of think through it, think through the physics that I can understand and then build the building like that. I try not to look anything up. I did, uh, I called my dad, actually had him look up the tables just to see if two by fours would work. And the big question mark here is what the, sl the snow load is in this area. If I go with the highest number I found online for snow load, two by fours, no matter what the spacing is, they're just not gonna be strong enough. That said, I know there's at least one more really big white pine on the property. I can't remember where it is, so I'm gonna take a little walk around. And that's one more white pine that could come down that's not healthy. You know what, before I start looking at them, I'm gonna grab the drone and I gotta run out to the deer castle. I think my uh, binoculars out there. Nothing too gnarly in here. I don't even see any spider webs. Man, this place is sweet. <laughs> That's funny, this is the first thing I built when I moved out here. Built it totally kind of wonky, haphazardly, like everything, it's not square, the floor is not square, whatever. It's perfect. I mean, it's not leaning, it's not sagging, it's kept all the critters out. And this part of the forest, I got some massive cedars and some really massive aspens. Bigger aspens than I've uh, milled yet. I don't even know, I don't even know what I'd do with them. But the good thing is they're, you know, 250 yards from camp. So they're not gonna fall down and crush anything. There's no reason to cut them down. Whoa, look at this pine. I forgot about this one. This only has, yeah, you wouldn't get very many good logs out of it. Yeah, that only goes up like uh, 20 feet and then splits into two separate trees and one's broken off, completely gone, and the other one's like super wavy, but look at the size of this thing. You can see there's there's the split on the top that broke off and then that's really hard to see. I mean, it looks pretty busted up up there and there aren't, these uh, white pines get some really long sweeping limbs and this doesn't really, it only has that chunk. Oh yeah, the top's completely dead on it. That's all the limbs there are right there. And then, I don't know if you can see it through the hole right here. There's the dead top of the tree. This must be the other one I was thinking of. Yeah, that's it. That's the other one. It's all, <laughs> it's all coming back to me now. Man, I don't know if that, maybe you get one log out of the bottom of it that would just be freaking huge, like unmillable huge. And then it looks like above that split, one really nice long log. And then there's a big crook and then maybe you can't see in the middle of those branches maybe one more log that's only about 12 inches diameter and the top's all dead <sighs> man that sucker looks like work <laughs> look at the size of some of these other uh, aspens out here they are not in good shape but 
Those are big suckers. Oh, look at all the ink, ink cap mushrooms. Just past their prime and they start, oh yeah, look at that. They start dissolving into a bunch of goo. That's an aspen. See the bark's coming off of here. I don't know if you can tell how much this thing's leaning, but as you go up, it goes more and more over. Kind of hard to tell on a camera. You can't tell if it's kind of warping your view, but same with this thing. That's uh, That should be about straight up and down right there. See how much it's leaned over. And that'll, that'll snap pretty soon. That's what you don't want coming down on your head. This aspen and a cedar grown right together. About the same size. Back out to the main freeway. Oh yeah, there's a couple of really big pines. This guy here, Woo. that's one of the healthier ones I've seen around here. Look at the size of those limbs, holy Moses. That's got to be uh, about 24 inches across at the base there. You can sometimes find these just by looking up through the top. I can see, uh, yeah, there's one there and there's another one back here. Wow, that sucker's huge. Huge too. Let's go look at the bottom of that one just for fun. I can see that it's perfectly healthy, but that one's not quite as big, maybe 20 inches or something right there. Oh yeah, up by the top of the shooting range here. Remember, uh, what did I build with that? Um, I think the man cave. If you guys remember that big pine I took down, I built the entire man cave, uh, all the framing with it. It was right at the top of the shooting range. It had the dead top on it. You guys remember this? I tried to keep it from rolling down the hill when I was milling it. I had to winch it up here. Now you can still see the sawdust from milling it. And there's another huge pine. That's another at least 24 inches there. It's got a little bit of a, like a crack in, I don't know if it's sap leaking out of it. Oh man, that stays enormous all the way up. That's like uh, 30 feet off the ground, it's still over 20 inches definitely not cutting that one well so i think we're still on the split up one i guess the split up one if i got three eight foot logs out of it would that be enough uh you know it definitely would because even if i only got a couple of good logs out of it i could still use some of those 12 footers that i have and i'll use the four feet i cut off the ends of those for something else finding all sorts of turkey feathers around here the last week or so i think it's turkey no, you're a turkey. No, you're, you're a turkey. I think I've walked everywhere that I've seen white pines. Oh, man. Can you see it? Climb over on the lens, you little bastard. Those are the uh, deer flies. Mm -hmm. You know what? Since I got the drone out and charged, let's just take a peek at that one tree. Uh-oh. I haven't used this in over a year. Oh, that's starting. It's twitching. You have to update the uh, software on these every now and then, and it's been a couple years since I did it, so hopefully it'll still take off. Error, error, more errors. Let's see if it works. Unfortunately, this is an old drone. It doesn't have any zoom on the camera, so you basically just gotta like fly it right up to what you wanna look at. It's a lot safer just to catch it, but sometimes it's fun to see if you can land it on a dime. Still got it. Okay, I kind of forgot how much fun it is to fly this thing. <laughs> uh, I think I got one more battery that's got a little bit of charge. 
I don't know how on earth I'll be able to take it off from down there where that split tree is. It's so thick, but that's kind of the fun of it too. Just looking up and seeing if you could fly through a hole in the canopy. Had this thing for a long time and uh, I mean, I've run into stuff before and broken propellers, but never lost it, never crashed it. You know, it comes back to you like riding a really screwed up, noisy flying bike. <laughs> I had the thought for a minute, what is this whole video going to be? Just me screwing around in the woods? And then I remembered, that's what every video is. For those of you that don't know anything about drones, these uh, newer drones, they're all GPS en enabled, so you can actually look at a map if you, you can't legally fly it out of a uh, line of sight. But if you accidentally did, there's a map you can pull up in the app. You use your phone for the screen so you can see what the drone sees. And if you flew it where you can't find it, you can look at the map and fly it right back to where it took off. And it uses GPS to hold itself in place too, as well as sensors on the drone. So this one just has sensors on the front and the bottom. I think a lot of them, newer ones, have them front, bottom, back, and sides. So if you're flying around anything or you're flying a certain number of feet off the ground, it'll actually sense the ground and what's in front and what's, what's in back. So you can take this thing up you know, within a few feet of a tree and it'll show you you're only three feet away, but it uses the sensors to hold it right in place, which is kind of cool. Like in the woods here, I'll find a flat spot or I'll you know take off from my hand and then I'll move out of the way and you can just let the drone hover right there while you're moving. You get a clear spot and then you could fly it some more and then you can move some more and get a clear you know view and fly it some more. It does take some, uh, some practice and some training to be able to fly it in really tight spaces without crashing it all the time but it's a lot easier than it probably looks just because it does have those sensors that hold it right in place. I'll show you what, show you what I'm talking about here. So this is the tree I want to look at. I can fly right up to the tree and next to the tree up so high and then there are limbs from another tree that are in the way so I won't be able to poke through there. So I can fly it up, come down, and I'll have to fly it sideways through the woods and find an open spot in the canopy to pop up and then we can look down at the top of the tree. There's not a spot to set this down out here because there's all this ground cover and stuff. So just take it off from hand, from hand, from the, from, from the hand. So it'll stay within a couple feet right there. He can walk away, come back, and it'll still be floating there. That right there in the center of the screen is the, is the top of this tree. You can see it's completely dead. So, yep, let's take that one down. It's always worth taking a quick look around, you know? A little bit of sun peeking through. Still pretty hazy. It's going to be way hot today. I'm already sweating my butt off. Oh, feels so good. <laughs> All right, just got to have a little salt water taffy for energy. Oh, yeah. You can really feel it circulating, yeah. Man, it really wants to go that away, and I'd like it to go that away. I wonder if I could get it to, to turn there. Take an awful lot of wedging. So that's the way it wants to go, right into all that garbage. It'd be a real pain, and it'd be on top of this other down tree, which I'd prefer not to clean up. The only clear runway I see is right through here. It did clip all the limbs of that uh, cedar. But if I could just miss the cedar, the main part of the tree, and get it right in there, we'd be pretty golden. 
I don't know. Let's see what happens. Yeah. That's gonna... <laughs> that'll be interesting. It'll be about six inches short there. I didn't get the back cut all the way straight across there, so I'm not really sure if it's, since I had to cut from both sides, I don't know if it's like here cut all the way up and here only back here, or the other way around. I couldn't really tell, so I think I'll just put, keep putting wedges in this side, see what happens. It's not too bad, actually. I want it to fall right now just so I can see what that cut looks like, just out of curiosity. Oh yeah, this side's cut quite a bit more than that side is. Holy schmoly, that's a big log. That's not even close to millable for me. It's going to take a uh, half a day's work just to make it uh, the right size to go through the mill. Holy cow. I could tell my, yeah, that's what I was feeling there. My back cut wasn't quite lined up. I had this in too far, and because it was up above this part, I couldn't really tell if it was uh, getting close to straight across there or not. I mean, all in all, it's still plenty of hinge wood all the way across. It's weird, a little more in the middle. But hey, if it goes where you want it to, we'll call it perfection. So you can see that's where we aimed, right next to that cedar tree. And I said it'll probably knock off those limbs, so I got, took all of them off. Just hammered right down there. So there might be some bad wood below this crotch here. This could be a little rotty. But sweet mama, that is a lot of wood there. I only need an eight footer out of it. See? Once again, if you get a 12 foot log, what are you gonna do? Just only use eight feet? The other trouble here is I'm gonna have to mill this right where it, right where it is on the ground here. It looks like if I cut it way back here, even below the top of the crotch there, I might get two eights out of it. It's actually considerably better than what I thought it would be. And then I couldn't tell with the drone or by eye where all these limbs are. I can't tell what's in there. Still can't tell until I clean it all out. We might get a log out of that. And it goes up to, looks like about here it was live down and then from there up it was dead because here's the top of the tree that we saw from the, uh, from the air. Actually before we do anything, I'm going to pull the limbs off here and just see what's in this because if I can get enough milling wood out of the top of this tree i'll leave the bottom for later for some bigger project and uh for a cooler day when i feel like milling a 24 inch log on a hill with a 17 inch bar <laughs>
You know it's good wood when you think your chain is dull, but you just sharpened it. This is just off the grinder. I'm like, oh, it's not going very well. <laughs> it's because the wood is really solid. Fantastic. This is a lot of wood. <laughs> okay, well that's ridiculous. Well, let's see what we can get out of this thing. That's eight feet there. So that's 16 there. The problem with that is it's getting into that crotch and I mean it looks nice and healed up but I bet the wood's not good probably all the way down here. We could easily get a nice 10 or even 12 footer out of this. Part of the problem with using that end I mean, it'll take a lot of whittling down to even be able to use it, but I can't really move it. You can imagine. Can you imagine? I can't imagine how much that weighs. But even my log lifter won't be able to pick that thing up. It's just going to like have to be milled right where it lays. So the problem with that is this other log is going to be in the way. I'm almost going to have to mill it from that end up. The downside of that is the top of the tree has more knots in it. Here, check out the rest of the log. Got a nice stretch here of about... 14 or 15 feet that's actually the best part of the whole log if it's cut in two like if I, I could do maybe just fit two eight footers in there so it could go basically like right at that garbage to about there's eight and then the other eight would actually be part of that crook but I could cut into it so I'd have to chainsaw through that it's not perfect there's about a perfect 14 footer in there, but I could stretch it. I wonder how many boards that would be, if that would get me the whole thing. You know, you could maybe get some kind of weird six footer out of that before it curves up again. You could get a weird six footer out of that. None of that's really gonna do me any good, but I'll use it later. And then, yeah, this is a toughie too. All right, make up your mind, Ryan, make up your mind. Oh. I'm at exactly eight. Hopefully that's long enough for the rafters. That's all the space we got. Yeah, buddy. Nice. That's about as dirty as you can possibly get running a chainsaw. Ugh, it's in my ears and my pants, up my nose. It's nice. After a couple years of doing this kind of stuff, I really, really like to have a stash of uh, logs laid up and, of course, lumber, but logs so I can make lumber without having to, you know, do the whole lap of the property, find the right tree, sort all that crap out, but just to have a couple logs laying back in the forest where I know if I need a couple extra boards for something, I can just go out there, get the mill, and, you know, half a day make myself some lumber.
So I don't know if I'll have to use this end. This would be sweet to have like a 12 foot massive trunk sitting here. Someday I'd like to figure out what I could do with that. If I had a massive mill, I could cut it this way and make like an entire table out of one slab. That's probably two and a half feet wide or something. But I got this eight footer all skinned up. Got this eight footer set to go. And then I've still got uh, all this down here. That's, uh, you know, a couple of crooked pieces and then maybe something good down there. But I am exhausted and very dirty. So uh, let's pick this up tomorrow. Okay, bye. Holy crap. Have you been standing there all night? <laughs> Get a life, people. So might as well carry them right up. Not gonna leave this stuff in the woods. Got some knots in there. Uh, I think those will just be in the first slab or two and then they're just on the outside. Usually they're not very big on the middle of the log. You can see some areas where the mill jumped over some of the knots. That usually happens in the very first cut because you know, there's more wood on the bottom than the top, considerably less on the top. So it, the mill tends to want to ride up out of it, especially over those knots. Man, this is 30 feet up the tree, so you don't think of it being that big, but sucker's a monster. sort of almost mill this log right where it is it's pretty flat i mean flat this way but overall downhill which is nice but i got to be able to get the drill in there to put the plates on and then the uh you know bars can't go there so uh if i roll it over i think it's going to be pretty uncomfortable sitting on that root ball so i'm going to see if i can just yoink it back a little bit just a few feet yeah only problem is I can't really lift this thing up.
What were we doing? Oh, building the cabin. Yeah, let's go do that. When I was piling these here, I have these uh, two spruce boards and I noticed they were sitting on top of a big fat pine board. And along the edges, you could see all sorts of sawdust. Because as you can see, I don't always uh, peel the bark off. So just to so these these are both these boards are really nice perfectly straight no knots or anything so i kind of hated them to be ruined with bugs and i just peeled them really quick and you can probably see all the lines where the bugs were in here and i thought these were most of these were getting eaten up by sawyer beetles which are really big they're the ones with the massive antennas like almost literally as long as my fingers they were just like little tiny tiny black dots you could barely see so of course, I saved one and put it under the microscope. Check it out. That's an appropriately named spruce bark beetle. I couldn't really get a, a better picture than that because they're so tiny. I mean, I could see it well under my big microscope, but it's just interesting to see what's eaten up the wood around here. And I mean, that was a healthy live tree. So I think those infested it just in the last, I don't know, few weeks or something. It's amazing how fast it happens. Man, I had to uh, do the armpit sniff test on a couple of my t-shirts. I'm out of shirts, but I'm having so much fun and the weather's so nice, I don't want to take the day and go to the uh, laundry mat. <laughs> That's okay, it doesn't smell that bad and I don't think it'll come through the camera. Thought I'd uh, come over here and be in the sun just for the first couple cooler hours of the day. Put these top plates on and that tree's gonna have to go. I should have just cut it down in the first place. I, now, looking back on it, I have no idea why I left it there. Unfortunately, it is leaning a little bit towards the cabin, and the crown weight, you know, the branches and stuff are more on the left side, so it wants to go that way. But it's not too big a lean, and I have a trick. So normally, if you wanted it to fall, I could make it fall kind of that way into the open area. You know, you do your face cut here, and then you do your back cut, and then in order to push it that way, you'd have to pound wedges in here problem is when the tree's this small you get your bar halfway in here and then you want to start with wedges well your bar's still sticking out here so there's no space to hit, get the wedges in so you can actually I don't recommend that people do this but for a small tree like this if there's not much lean you can actually do the back cut first which you don't you don't often see people doing but you cut your back cut you know halfway through the tree two-thirds of the way or something pound the wedges in and then do the face cut so it's kind of uh, touchy how much you do each one of them you don't want to put the back cut too far in because then the tree will sit back and pinch your bar and also you don't want to pound the wedges too far in because then when you go to do that uh, face cut you're going to get your bar pinched so just kind of have to be careful when you do it but uh, this is kind of the the perfect tree to do this kind of appropriate I just got a book from the uh, library an audio book that's the intersection between physics and life and biology that's exactly what this is I mean it's a good thing I listened to five minutes of the book already so I'm prepared <laughs> I'd really only do that on quite a small tree and without very much lean and hopefully the inside's pretty good. You wouldn't want to try that on a big tree with a lot of lean. I mean, there'd just be no point to do it. You do it the right way, do the face cut and then the back cut. That's a good trick every now and then. 
All right, I'm out of two by fours for that uh, top plate. So let's make some two by sixes. And then of course, if you can't quite, quite get a whole two by six, you end up with a two by four out of the scraps. And uh, through this whole pile, I'll definitely have enough to finish that. I only need three or four more two by fours. So you can see like this one, there must have been a high spot here and then a low spot there and then a high spot or something. That's why it pinches together there. So I'm not gonna rip the two by six right here on that line because then you'd end up wasting all this over here. I'll probably pull it out to somewhere around there. And then, you know, there'll be one spot in the two by six where the corner's not quite there, but that's totally fine. And if I do that, it'll probably leave me a two by four on the other side, which also might have a little bit of a dip in there, but who cares? You see, this is the smallest board and it's 11 inches wide. Really, it's about a foot wide. So no sense in only using six inches of it. That was slimy. You'd think the sap would make your hand stick to it better. All the sap does is stick to your clothes real nice. Well, once again, I think I'm going circular saw. All those two by fours I've ripped up to build all this so far has used just about one gallon of gas. <laughs> that sucker is a sipper. There's the middle of that board where I just decided to leave a little bit of that on there just to save lumber. And actually, yeah, I got more than enough to make a two by four out of that one too. What can I say? My shirts got too stinky. I had to run out for a day and uh, do laundry and since I was out, I grabbed another circular saw. Pretty sure that I burned up the other saw. <laughs> but it turns out it was just kicking the generator off, like putting it into some safety cycle and you'd have to shut it down and restart it. It cut really slowly the whole time I used it. And that was, I looked it up, that was a 13 amp saw and it was maybe not even from this century. <laughs> it's funny to say that. But kind of the standard in circular saws is 15 amp, and I think that's because that's the maximum you can expect to pull out of any given power outlet. And I think that's all this generator will put out. Let's see, 15 amps times 120 volts. Yeah, that's about exactly what this generator will do. So having a bad old funky motor was what was tripping it off. So I got this uh, no frills Makita, and holy cow, it weighs five pounds more than the old skill saw and it cuts fast. That's all the lumber I milled up the last few days from that one tree. Unfortunately, I need a whole lot of two by sixes. I think it's like 14 per side, which is way more than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, it's 17 feet long, every 16 on center, plus an extra one on the end. I don't know, it's a lot. This is not enough. So if uh, these don't make it, I'll go ahead and chop some out of these. But I'm uh, actually a whole step ahead here. I need to put up some kind of a ridge beam. I think, I think I'm gonna do it like I've done some of the other structures I've built out here. Let me show you, show you what we've got in here. So for whatever reason, this is just what uh, came to mind when I built this. The wall ends right here. And then I put this post here, which is supported by uh, stud directly underneath it and then set that ridge beam on top of that and kind of screwed it together just to hold it into place and then I laid these rafters on here. The trick is going to be in the cabin. I think this is only like 12 feet here in the cabin it's going to be 17 and obviously I can't mill 17 so I'm going to have to use multiple boards screwed together to somehow come up with a ridge beam that's at least 17 feet long. 
Actually, I need uh, two of them ripped down the middle. Anyway, sandwich them together. We'll figure it out. Doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Trying to think what the best way is to do this. And the more I think about it, uh, the more I think there isn't a best way, there's an only way. I have to make that beam first across the top in order to make the supports, because it all has to come out to the right height in order to get the right pitch on the roof. Does that make sense? Sort of makes sense to me. I'd like to have maybe a little bit of overhang on the roof on this side and the other side. So this wall is 17 feet long, so 18, 19. Go for like a 19 foot beam. And then if I don't want it quite that much overhang, I can cut it off. Yeah, let's make a big fat 19 foot beam. I'm gonna go for the biggest ones I got. So it's gonna be ripped in half and then they'll be doubled. So it's gonna be like a, a four by six, basically. That'll be beefy. The thinner of the two boards at the thinner of the two ends is 14 and a half inches wide. That's pretty stout. That is the biggest board I've ever milled right there. 12 foot 3, 17 inches wide. Does it look that huge on camera? Now the question is, before I nail this all together 20 feet long, am I going to be able to lift it into place? It doesn't seem as bad as that, uh, you guys remember watching the gazebo build videos, that ridge that I put up there, that was one of these boards, well I guess it was about the same thing. Same length and it was the whole board in width, so it's like, I don't know, 15, 15 inches or something. Yeah, so I ought to be able to get this up there somehow. <laughs> you know what? I'll walk down to the gazebo and take a peek how I did that. Maybe I'll learn something, you know? The guy that built that must have been a bleeding genius. Sarah was here last week and it was really hot, so we spent a few days sitting in the gazebo and I took my entire computer apart, my laptop, and put new hard drives in it, something I've never done before. It was, uh, it was freaky and had a couple hitches, but I'm surprised that you can do that out in the middle of nowhere. Just gotta have the right size screwdriver and uh, be a little nuts to dive into it. Oh, that's a big fat guy. That's like three inches wide, thick. Oh, because it sat on top of this beam, which must be, yeah, three or three, uh, probably three inches. So sat that sideways. Yeah, and then I carved a notch in it like a fork and set that massive beam in, in there. And then these braces were just on to stiffen it up until the roof and everything got on there. I don't even think it's necessary for them to be on there anymore. All right, well, I mean, it's worked so far. It's been up for, what, a year or two, so let's do that. All right, did a little calculating. So I'm gonna do a 612 pitch, like yeah. Holder upper thing here needs to be 34 and a third inches. So it'll be two side by side seven inches. So what's left is, what, 27 and a third. So we need these upright poles, 27 and a third. I think we'll do two underneath it, and then we'll make a couple a little bit taller just to hold that beam on there for a while. I don't know if you can see that. That makes any sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there. Might as well use up some scraps. end up having to take these off later and trim them so we'll just use some couple of screws hopefully that'll hold it up you know better use screws <laughs>
let's see, four feet, right? All right, well, let's see if I can get it up there. This is gonna be ugly. Maybe we gotta step it back and forth. Somebody didn't pound the nails in at enough of an angle. There's a few of them sticking out here. It's not safe. Safety's number one around here, you know that. Yeah. So the beams should overhang the end of the building by a foot and a half. That's just what it ended up being. And I marked them so I'd know exactly where the beam should sit in the fork, you know, how much should stick over. And when I line one side up and then go to the other side, it's way off. And I thought I was losing my mind a little bit. And then I remembered, remember when I was making the foundation for this thing? I dug the holes, made the concrete pads, and then went to put the frame for the floor on top of it and the concrete pads were off a little bit. So I just, you know, just decided to lengthen one side of the building by like, I don't know, three or four inches or something. And I'd forgotten that I did that. So this place is not square. It's considerably not square. So I think so far I haven't made any mistakes by not remembering that the building wasn't square. This would be the first one. I'll fix that. I'm just gonna take what, the average of that wall and that wall and then, you know, do the zip, that kind of stuff works every time. Huh, that was actually considerably easier than I thought. I wasn't uh, looking forward to doing that ridge beam. You can see it's definitely hanging off way far enough. I think I'm going to do the same, the roof like I've done before and just have the boards come over maybe, I don't know, 6, 8, 10, 12 inches or something and just cut them. I don't know if I'll put a, is that fascia or is that fascia? I don't know. I don't know if I'll put a board on the end of it there or not. There's really no, no reason to even be thinking about that right now. One step at a time. And next video, we'll get the, actually we'll cut all those uh, rafters up that I made. Have to do some thinking and measuring. Man, I hate thinking. But you kind of have to. You have to do a little bit of figuring to make sure the rafters will actually sit on there. I found that I have a lot better results if I, measure it do it mathematically then if i like lay one on there and cut it to fit and then you know multiply it all the way down oh man you know what i just thought of i just hosed myself i'm not going to be able to do these mathematically like measure out you know from the top of the rafter down to the cutout of it is so many inches this is going to change every single rafter oh uh, well that's why you don't make a house slightly out of square. Dang. Okay, that's gonna suck. Well, whatever. You know, I'm still outside in the woods by myself in the middle of nowhere with nobody yapping or watching over my shoulder telling me I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, I know that anyway. Anyway, come back next week, get some roof on. See ya.